If you were forced to enter a brutal gambling tournament where one wrong move could destroy your life, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the dead game in Liar Game Part 2. This girl is going to use the dirtiest tricks to get ahead. A month ago, now here managed to escape a brutal dead game, but her friend Akiyama was forced to keep playing. The only way she can help him is if she rejoins the tournament, and that's when the dealer appears on the screen. He announces that this time they'll be playing the downsizing game, and the rules are simple. Each each player must write five names on their cards to vote on who should advance to the next game. But if you write your own name, you'll be fined 100 million yen. After 10 rounds, the person with the least votes will be eliminated, but whoever gets the most votes will be given a reward and the right to withdraw from the tournament. Since they're all stuck here, the players have also been given M tickets, which can be used as currency to trade for anything they want. But if someone refuses to fulfill their end of the bargain, they'll be punished with more debt. With the rules explained, the girl heads to the common area to join the others, and and overhears one of the men agree to vote off this player, Fukunaga, after he scammed them all in the last game. The group hates this guy, but that's when the thief has a brilliant idea. Speaking up, he asks how much money now here still owes to the game, and the girl reveals that her debt is already paid off. That makes the group furious as they scold her for being greedy, and she realizes the thief tricked her into becoming the first person they're going to eliminate. Later, the thief talks to the girl in private and suggests they work together, revealing he's got a plan to win. He explains that the rules never put a limit on how many times they can write someone's name, and suggests they write each other's names five times for every round. By by the end of the game, they'll both have 50 votes, which is enough to guarantee they won't lose. With no better options, the girl agrees, but trusting him is going to be her biggest mistake. Putting their plan into action, everyone submits their cards, and the results of the first round are announced. Fukunaga is in the lead with 10 votes, and now here is shocked. Even though he promised to help her, the girl has received no votes, and it means the thief betrayed her. But by the end of the game, she's going to turn into a cold-blooded killer and get revenge. Okay, this girl is not thinking straight. She's already been through two brutal dead games, and if there was one lesson she should have learned, it's that you can't trust anyone. Unfortunately, this thief has already tricked her twice in less than an hour, and that means she doesn't stand a chance of winning without some help. Now, there might be a way to fix this problem, because at its core, the game is extremely simple, and there are definitely ways to hack it if we know where to look. Our goal is to get people to write our name on their card, and if we can get at least 50 total votes, then we're guaranteed to win this game. Game. The reason is because with 9 players casting 5 votes in 10 rounds, that's 450 total votes that will be cast in the game, so it's mathematically impossible for you to lose as long as you have 50 votes. Now, all the players want this girl to be eliminated, so we need to start influencing them to earn their votes back. People are a lot more likely to help you if they get what they want first, so with this in mind, I would fill someone's name on my card and show that person, explaining that I want them to win because they're the best player to beat Fukunaga in the next game. Everyone in the group should realize that this thief is a much more challenging opponent than now here, and redirecting their hatred back to him is going to be the best motivation for them to change their minds. This forces them to think about who they want to be playing against in the next game when the stakes get higher. Once they realize that the thief is the greater threat, they'll gladly accept 5 votes from me, and that's when I'd ask for them to return the favor by writing my name on their card for just one round. There's no guarantee this will work, but since they can't vote for themselves, this strategy can really put them ahead, and they're likely to take the deal. Now, this is the part where he's screw everyone over, because if we offer the same deal to every other player, in exchange, they would be giving us enough votes to beat Fukunaga and put us in the lead. To make this work, I would simply tear up all the old cards and fill out a new one with different names right before it's time to vote. It's a cold-blooded strategy, but there's a chance of getting 35 votes in the first round alone, and even though they'll find out we betrayed them, there's nothing they'll be able to do about it. Now, it's fair to point out that this strategy can only be used once. As soon as you take advantage of someone's trust, they'll never give it back to you. But the problem is that we still need 15 more votes to reach a guaranteed victory. It's definitely a risky strategy, but the benefit here is that the other players will take us more seriously once they see the result, and if we're this far in the lead, then they're much more likely to pick on Fukunaga instead. If the strategy works, he would have the fewest votes, and is still considered the most threatening player in the game, so targeting him for elimination instead of us is still the most logical choice to make. The game continues as the players all submit their cards, but after several rounds, the girl still hasn't received a single vote. At this this rate she'll be eliminated and forced to drop out with a hundred million yen in debt. Feeling hopeless, she hides in the back room when someone hands her a water bottle. Etho here is grateful that she protected him in the previous game, but confesses that Fukunaga told everyone about their secret deal and offered to help the others win by betraying her. Using the M tickets, they promise to give him five million yen each to make sure the girl loses, and with every one of their votes contractually bound, there's no way for now here to win the game. 
When the results of the fourth round come in, Fukunaga is still in the lead and the girl's the only person without any votes. She's given up completely, but the thief has another plan up his sleeve. He offers to make her a new deal with a chance to win 30 votes, but if she loses, he wants 30 million yen and with no good options, the girl agrees. Meeting her in private, he explains that her card is the Joker and his card is a misprint with backs on both sides. She must draw a card face down out of the bag and if it's the Joker, she wins, but if it's his card, she loses. He tells tells her there's a 50% chance of victory, and the first to win 10 rounds will be forced to fulfill their promise. With the first draw, the girl manages to pull out a joker and she celebrates, but she doesn't realize that this whole game is rigged. They continue playing, but after 15 rounds, the man has taken an overwhelming lead. One wrong choice could cost the girl 30 million yen, but when she flips her next card, she's horrified to discover that she's just lost. Fukunaga has tricked her again, and now he has no choice but to give him the money. Going to an empty room, she breaks down in tears. But suddenly, the door behind her opens, and she turns around to see Akiyama standing there. An agent invited him here to help the girl, and with him on her side, now might actually survive the game. She tells the con man about what happened, and he scolds her for getting tricked by the thief, explaining that the double-sided card is guaranteed to win. Since Now's card was the Joker, she only wins if it's pulled out face down, cutting her chances of winning in half. But the thief will always be able to flip his card to reveal the winning side. This game was rigged, but the con man reveals there's a way for her to get revenge. Bench. The girl can mark the cards by scratching the edge, and this will tell her which one is hers before she takes it out of the bag. By the time the thief suspects she's cheating, the girl will have won the game and get all her money back. Later, the girl confronts the thief and demands a rematch, offering 50 million yen in exchange for only 10 votes. He can't believe how stupid she is and agrees to play again, but this will be his biggest mistake. Okay, you know this is a manga when your overpowered boyfriend comes to help you at the last minute, and it means this girl has just become the scariest player in the game. Now, Fukunaga came up with a pretty smart way to trick her, because the man knew he could use this very simple game to make her think she had a 50% chance of winning and steal all her money. She didn't realize that even though there are only two cards, the game is actually being played with four sides, because each card has a face and a back. According to his rules, Now can only win if she pulls the Joker out face down and then flips it to reveal her card. But the reason this is clever is because if she pulls out his card, she will still lose regardless of whether it's face up or face down. This means between all four possible card sides she can draw, the girl will lose on 75% of them. The man knew exactly how to take advantage of her naivety, but there's something he's doing here that's even smarter, and it all has to do with these M tickets. At the beginning of the game, the agency provided everyone with a booklet, explaining that this represents the 100 million yen loan they've been given, but this man has found a way to use them to his advantage. He realized that we are contractually bound to whatever we write on it, and this one detail changes the entire dynamic of the game. The good thing about this is that most people don't read contracts to begin with, and that's how I would try using Fukunaga's own strategy against him. Now, this guy is really smart, but we can't ignore that when the girl offered to play his game again with higher stakes, he actually believed she still didn't realize that the game was rigged. The girl took advantage of him by playing dumb, and that's why if it were me, I would have written on the M ticket in fine print that for playing his card game, he must give us all of his votes for every round. This might seem risky, but he never checked the ticket to confirm what the girl wrote, and it means he's completely let his guard down because he doesn't think she's a threat. Using this strategy lets us take full advantage of his overconfidence, and we won't have to worry if he catches us cheating during the card game. It's a dirty trick to play, but that's exactly why it's called Liar Game. Looking for ways to take advantage of someone is always going to improve your strategy for winning, because the real currency in this game is true information. The only way to get ahead is if everyone else is making decisions based on lies, and since no one will ever guess that now is going to trick them, she's in a perfect position to screw them over. They start the game, and after several rounds, both players are tied at 9, with one more card deciding who will win. Confused, the thief accuses her of cheating, but the girl argues if the odds are 50-50, then there's nothing suspicious. That's when she pulls out the final card and flips it, revealing another joker. The man panics, knowing that he's lost, and threatens to tear his M ticket, but he's stopped at the last second by the agent. She she warns him that he'll be fined 100 million yen if he doesn't answer the agreement, and the man throws the ticket on the floor, furious he was tricked. Later, the results for round 6 are announced, but that's when the dealer reveals that someone has traded votes. Everyone is shocked to see that now here has received 10 votes from Fukunaga, and they have no idea that she's got a plan to win the game. After the results of the 8th round are announced, the girl approaches Akano here, revealing that the thief will lead this game with a 65 million yen advantage, and they can't let that happen. That's when she offers him 70 million yen to buy 10 of his votes, explaining that he can use this money in the next round to help take down the thief. The man accepts her deal and she signs the M ticket, but this decision is going to backfire on him. 
Later, everyone waits in front of the screen, but as the results come in, they all realize something's wrong. Somehow, the girl has taken the lead with 80 votes. Confused, Okono demands to know what is going on, and that's when she reveals her master plan. She made the same deal with every single player to buy 10 votes for 70 million yen, but with one round left, no one can get the 50 votes they need to guarantee a win. According to the agreement, she can pay them any time before the final vote, and that's when Akiyama appears, making it clear that she will be selling her extra votes to the highest bidder. In private, some of the players approach the girl to make a deal, but Akiyama tells them they'll sell two votes for 70 million yen. The players are shocked, but the con man points out the girl already owes them 70 million from their first deal, making it an equal exchange. And with that, the men agree to the terms. Akiyama then visits the thief and offers to sell him two votes, but the price just went up to 80 million yen. It's a horrible deal, but the man realizes there's no other choice and pays to stay in the game. Later, the agent approaches the girl, reminding her to confirm all the transactions with the agency, but that's when she realizes something. Nobody has to lose this game and comes up with a clever plan that will save them all. Rushing back to her friend, she finds Akiyama and asks to take over the operation. He knows she's up to something and lets her talk to the player, but is surprised when she asks the woman to give up all of her money in exchange for one single vote. With time running out, the other players keep coming back to purchase her votes, and by the end, now here has managed to collect 900 million yen, leaving the rest of them with nothing. It's a brutal strategy, but they don't realize she's about to save everyone. Okay, this is insane. Now here's just accumulated over six and a half million dollars and is completely dominating the game. Akiyama explained to everyone that with only one round left, nobody can gain enough votes to guarantee a win unless they buy them from the girl. If you do the basic math, only 50 votes are left undecided for the final round, and if they're split evenly between eight players, it's clearly not enough. So the players need to make sure they can buy extra votes from the girl before anyone else does. What's so great about this strategy is that if the others realize that this is their only hope of surviving, then Akiyama can increase the price whenever he wants. It's a classic example of supply and demand. These votes are a rare and valuable resource, and the fewer there are, the higher their value. The other players will become so desperate, they'll pay almost any price to stay in the game. Now, it might seem counterintuitive for these players to take the risk of selling 10 votes in the first place, but there's one major reason they all fell for this trick. Every one of them had a binding contract with Fukunaga, and it gave them false security that since nobody was allowed to vote for the girl, she would lose and their victories were guaranteed. They didn't stop to consider that she would make this deal to other players, because according to her M ticket, the girl only had 70 million to spend, which is exactly how much she was offering. That's why this was such a genius strategy, because by making the same contract with every one, she was spending money she didn't have yet, knowing that it would buy a monopoly on the remaining votes, and could then sell them back for an even higher price. Now, it's fair to point out that this is a lot of money, but personally, I would never accept her deal. $500,000 for 10 votes sounds like a dream come true, but the problem is that if anything goes wrong and you lose, the agency will put you in a lifetime of debt, and that's terrifying. It would take the average Japanese worker more than 18 years to pay it back, with no money left to eat. And when you factor in exactly what's at stake here, it's just not worth the risk. Now, as smart as it was, their strategy had one weakness. Because a vote is only worth what someone is willing to sell it for, and if enough players negotiated for a better deal, the plan would not have been as effective. If this is the final round, I would not be handing out my votes like it was a fire sale because we'll risk losing, and that's why they should have either rejected the offer or tried to eliminate as much risk as possible and change the deal. When the girl first approached the other players, she told them that there were other revival rounds happening around the country, but one in the winners dropped out, and all she needs is 10 more votes to take their place. It's a ridiculous story, but if we insisted on helping, I would only offer 5 votes for 35 million and encourage the girl to use what she has left to buy 5 more votes from someone else. This would give us a better margin of victory in case something unexpected happened and we can make some extra money without losing the game. Later, the group gathers in front of the screen, and the agent announces the results of the final round, congratulating Now for coming in first with 51 votes. As the winner, she's given a special prize of 100 million yen, and the agent announces each person's final tally until it's revealed that Eto here will be eliminated. He's just lost the game, and breaks down in tears feeling absolutely hopeless. The others can't believe she would let the thief stay in the game when he screwed her over, but Now explains she found a method for everyone to be free of debt. Thinking back to the previous games, she realized that there had always been enough money for the players to drop out of the tournament without any debt, but only if they worked together. Instead, they chose to fight for the cash, and that was their biggest mistake. Turning around, she approaches the loser and hands him 200 million yen. He'll be able to pay off all the debt he owes to the game and drop out of the competition for good. The girl promises to split the remaining money evenly between the rest of the players, and they're all shocked by her compassion. 
That's when the dealer interrupts, pointing out she won't be able to withdraw from the game, but the girl doesn't care, telling him she's decided to continue playing in the third round. After giving everyone their cash, now and Akiyama are about to leave, when suddenly they find the exit blocked by agents, and the dealer announces that the third game of the tournament is ready to begin. These men have come to take all the players to the next arena, and they leave the arcade in the back of a truck with no idea what to expect. The next morning, they arrive at an airport, and when they finally step out of the vehicle, the agent welcomes them to the third round. She's about to take them into the building, but another agent tells her one of the other games has too many people. They'll need to transfer a player named Yokia, but they'll soon discover he's the most dangerous person here. Entering the building, they each take one of these name cards and are led into an airport terminal. That's when the dealer introduces them to their next challenge called the Contraband Game and explains the rules. The players will be split into two teams, taking turns trying to sneak 2.5 billion yen through customs, and whichever team has smuggled the most cash will win, while the losing team will be forced to drop out and pay the debt. Using their name cards to withdraw money, the smugglers can put up to 100 million yen in this case, while the inspector from the other team has two options. He can let them pass or doubt the smuggler and guess how much cash they're holding. If the guess is higher than what's in the case, then the money will be given to the inspector, but if the guess is lower, the smuggler passes and gets to keep what's inside. However, if the case is empty and the smuggler is doubted, then the inspector must pay the smuggler half the amount as punishment. After 30 rounds, whatever cash is left over that they don't smuggle will be shared equally to the opposing team, and the winners will be allowed to advance to the fourth game. Suddenly, the lights change colors and separates the room in half. The people on the blue side will be citizens of Water Country, while everyone else will be citizens of Fire Country. With the teams decided, the players enter their terminal, and now here insists she goes first. Okay, this girl should not be going first. In the last game, she just cost us six million dollars by giving it all away to the players, so sending her to a room with a hundred million yen in cash makes me really nervous. Now having said that, what's unique about this game compared to the others is that it can only be won as a team. Behind all the crazy rules, this game is extremely simple, because your only goal is to cooperate and smuggle more money than your opponents. This is almost like if you were playing capture the flag across international borders, because in the game you have to get into your enemy's territory to get the money and sneak it past the inspector to bring it back to your team. Now there are two roles here we have to strategize for, because as the inspector, we need to stop the other team from smuggling their money. On the other hand, we can't win without smuggling as much of our own cash as we can, and that's why we need to hack this game so that our opponents can't predict what's in the box. The solution here is to think like an actual smuggler would and find a different way to smuggle money that nobody knows about. If we look at this pile of 100 million yen, we can see that there are 10 piles, and each pile has 10 bundles with 10 10,000 no bills. If we do the math, that makes up 1 million yen each, but the most important observation here is that based on the size, we can easily hide at least 5 bundles on our body every time we walk into that room without anyone noticing. If everyone on the team does this, then over the next 30 rounds, we could sneak an extra 150 million yen past the other team's inspector because it's not in the case for them to find. If it's starting to become a close game, this could make the difference between winning and losing, and we need to consider every advantage we have to make sure we don't fall into crippling debt. Now, we also have to figure out how to cheat as the inspector, because if we guess they're smuggling but find nothing inside, we have to pay them half of whatever our guess is. That means if I claimed this player had 100 million yen and the case was empty, I would lose 50 million as punishment. This is an extremely expensive mistake, and that's why if it were me, I would always carry one bundle of cash into the room. That way, when we open the case to check it, we can stay seated and turn it towards us, which provides the perfect opportunity to plant the bundle of cash, making it look like they were trying to smuggle it. This dirty trick gives us an insurance policy if we guess wrong, and saves us from having to pay such a huge fine. We won't be able to use it often because the other team will catch on and use the strategy against us, but if it's a close game and one wrong guess makes a difference between winning and losing, it's definitely worth a try. The girl points out that if the trunk is empty but the inspector doubts and tries to guess how much is inside, then she'll receive half of what he guessed in cash with no risk. The others aren't impressed with her strategy, but with no better ideas, they decide to let her go first. The girl stumbles into the customs room acting like the case is too heavy, but as soon as she sits down, the man lets her pass. Her plan failed, and she returns to her team as the thief points out everyone else had the same idea. It was an obvious strategy, but they're all scared to lose money and decide to keep playing it safe. The game continues, but after several rounds, the other team has already managed to smuggle 200 million yen, and the players are terrified they're going to lose if they keep playing like this. Akiyama knows they have to be more aggressive and volunteers to be the next inspector, but he doesn't realize his worst enemy is on the other team and is already one step ahead. Inside the customs room, the con man waits for the smuggler to get himself seated when he tells his opponent he dropped something. 
On the ground is a bundle of cash, and the old man panics, thinking it might have fallen out of his case. But the con man suddenly stands up. He reveals that he intentionally left it there as a trick, and now he knows for certain that the man is smuggling cash. Hitting the doubt button, he predicts there's a hundred million yen inside, and Akiyama opens it up to find that he's exactly right. The game continues, and in the next round, the team reverses roles, but this time when the inspector doubts the smuggler, he discovers it's completely empty. Water Country has changed the momentum of the game, and it makes the other team nervous. Terrified of going into debt, the old man runs away, but this stranger isn't worried. He already has a strategy to win, and he'll soon proved to be the biggest threat in the entire game. Inside the customs room, Yokia walks in and approaches the table without fear. He's clearly up to something, and the men start talking to each other, but nobody can hear what's being said. Suddenly, the inspector chooses pass, but the smuggler opens his case to reveal it's filled with 100 million yen. Afterwards, now here volunteers to go next, and the thief has a clever idea, suggesting she take 50 million and 10,000 yen. He points out that so far, the inspectors have only made three choices. They've either let people pass, or they've doubted choosing to guess 100 million or 50 million yen. He realized that if their cash is higher than the inspector's guess, they have a 67% chance of winning, but things are about to go horribly wrong. Confident, the girl walks into the customs room and finds Yokia has been waiting for her. As they sit down, the man reveals that he's actually psychic and already knows what's inside the case. She can't tell if he's lying, but that's when the man predicts there's exactly 50 million and 10,000 yen. Now here is shocked, and he makes it clear they stand no chance of winning. Okay, this guy is full of if he had psychic powers, there would be no point for his other team members to be playing because he could read our minds and win on his own. The fact that he didn't start participating until the fifth round means that this isn't a superpower, it's a super strategy, and we have to find out what it is so we can beat him. Now, the smartest thing to do is simply prove that he doesn't have psychic powers by making him guess what number I'm thinking of from 1 to 100 million. This might seem like a pointless strategy, but this actually hurts him a lot more than you might think. The reason he's telling people he's psychic is to make the other team too afraid to smuggle any more money. By asking him to prove that he can read your mind, this will weaken his gambit, because even if he says no, it gives enough for the other players to doubt his claim. We have to show our opponent we have the balls to not only smuggle money, but also to call their bluff and risk paying the penalty. We're guaranteed to get some of the guesses wrong, but by taking the risk, the enemy will be much less confident in their decisions, and it helps even the playing field. At the end of the day, if they know you're too scared to play, then they'll walk all over you, and that's why being aggressive is the best strategy right now. Now, Fukunaga here had an interesting strategy, pointing out that the inspectors are only choosing one of three options. They will either pass, guess 50 million, or 100 million. His theory is that if we put a few extra bills in there, we'll only lose when he guesses the third option. What's interesting is that this actually reveals a serious flaw in the game. In order to successfully smuggle money through customs, the inspector has to guess the same or higher than the amount you have. That means if I put one 10,000 yen bill inside the case and the inspector doubts me and says I'm carrying 100 million, he would still win the round and the money would be confiscated. It's kind of unfair, and that's why I would consider trying to hack this problem to take more money than the other team would be expecting. According to the dealer, this case could only carry 100 million yen, but clearly there's room to fit one more bill. If we slip another 10,000 yen between the cracks, then our opponents are guaranteed to make a wrong guess, because we're carrying more than the maximum capacity of the suitcase. We could even repeat the strategy by changing how many bills we're adding, and it forces the inspector to be much more accurate when they try to call our bluff. Now, the game might not let us put more cash into the suitcase, because if the players were required to count it to confirm the amount, each round would take forever. That's why this strategy might be discouraged, but it's definitely worth trying, because we should always test the parameters of the game to see what we can get away with. After all, this is called the Liar Game, and finding clever ways to cheat the system is proven to be the best way to get ahead. The team regroups, terrified of losing any more cash, but that's when this geek Ono volunteers to be the next inspector. In the room, he immediately doubts the smuggler, and the others watch as he opens up the case, revealing 100 million yen inside. It seems like a stroke of luck, but when he goes again, he catches another player and proves that there's a way to tell if someone is smuggling cash. He returns to the room, and the others ask the geek to teach them his secret method, but the man refuses. Instead, he demands they make him the team leader if they want to win, but Akiyama knows there's something else he's hiding. That's when the dealer announces the round 10 has ended. Fire Country is winning by 550 million yen, but when it ranks the players by the amount of money they've confiscated, Ono has earned the most. Impressed, the others agree to make him the leader, but soon they'll discover this man cannot be trusted. In the next round, the geek heads out to take his turn, but suddenly collapses from a stomach ache. He begs the woman to take his place as the inspector and quickly runs away to the bathroom. But Akiyama realizes that Ono just made his biggest mistake. The con man talks to the girl in private, revealing that he 
he's figured out how Ono has been so successful, and it's the same strategy as Yokia's psychic powers. Akiyama predicts that when the man returns, he'll instruct the next player to take in some money, and as Ono comes back, he orders the woman to smuggle 99,990,000 yen. That's when Akiyama interrupts, explaining that Yokia isn't psychic, and he's written down a special way to trick him. Taking the piece of paper, she heads inside the interrogation room where the man is waiting, but he wastes no time and quickly presses the button, predicting exactly how much money's inside. He stands up to open it, but the man is shocked to find 10,000 more than he predicted, and for the first time in the entire game, he's failed as an inspector. The woman returns to the group celebrating her victory, but that's when Akiyama accuses the geek of working with Yokia, and the others are shocked. The comment points out that these two players made a secret plan telling each other how much is being smuggled from their own teams, and it made them both rich. With his plan revealed, the geek confesses it's true, but it was all Yokia's idea. The man is extremely clever, and his next strategy is going to be even more more vicious. Continuing the game, now goes next and finds Yokia already waiting for her in the customs room. Suddenly, he stands up and presses the intercom button to talk to the con man directly. The smuggler reveals that he used to run a pyramid scheme for the Liar Game Agency, but Akiyama destroyed it after his mother got scammed out of all her money. As punishment, Yokia was sent into the tournament, but he used now here to trick Akiyama into joining the game. He knew the con man would want to help her, and now he can finally get his revenge. Akiyama is furious and tries to break through the glass wall, but the agents hold him back. This man destroyed his mother's life, but now he's going to instantly regret it. Okay, this has gone too far. Yokia just revealed that he's trying to get payback on Akiyama for exposing his pyramid scheme. But this man's revenge plot is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. First, he had to bribe someone and force him to pretend to be a police officer in the same area that the girl lived in. Then, manipulate the liar game agency to choose now here as a player, expecting that she's going to immediately take the cash to the fake cop. Once she does, the cop will send her to find his arch nemesis Akiyama, who just so happens to be getting released from prison on the same day, and agree to help. This way, several months later, you can wait for him to beat three and a half dead games so you can finally reveal your master plan. It's the most impractical revenge plot I've ever heard in my life. Putting this many variables in the way of getting payback is a recipe for failure, and that's why if they were me, I would have just asked the fake police officer to beat him up or burn his house down. Now as for the geek, he was working with Akiyama's enemy to make himself rich, and I can't blame him. As shady as it sounds, there's actually a pretty good reason to do this, because we have to remember that if our team loses, we all have to pay back 500 million yen that we don't have. That's why it's smarter to protect yourself, so that even if your team does lose, you're still earning money for the agency to help pay off the debt. We also have to appreciate that if we don't accept Yokia's deal, he's going to approach someone else like Fukunaga, who has always looked out for his own self-interest over everyone else. That's why taking the man's secret offer was a good decision. The one mistake this guy made, however, was to brag that he figured out a solution, because it made him look suspicious. By doing this, he automatically put himself in a position where his team was forced to work against him for their own survival. It would have been a lot smarter if he never said anything to the group, and just pretended like every time he stopped a smuggler, it was a lucky guess. That way, it would have taken Akiyama a much longer time to figure out his secret strategy, and once we've earned enough cash, we can redirect our focus into helping our team win. Losing his cool, Akiyama throws himself into the tournament, deciding to act as both the inspector and the smuggler when he's making more mistakes than ever before. They're losing the game, and he desperately forces everyone to give up their ATM cards to keep playing. The con man has become too emotional, but has no idea this was all a part of Yokia's plan. After 20 rounds, it looks like the other team is going to win, but that's when the leader sees Akiyama smiling through the cameras and realizes something's wrong. The dealer announces the results, and the man is shocked to discover that his team has somehow lost over 2 billion yen. Panicking, he walks into the room to confront Akiyama, but that's when the con man reveals his master plan. He was pretending to be angry this whole time, but secretly convinced the members of the other team to work with him, promising to help them escape the game with no debt. They switched ATM cards so that whenever the players withdrew money, it came from their own bank, which means it was never smuggled in the first place. The players were essentially stealing from their team for personal profit, which is why they're losing by 2 billion yen. It's a brilliant plan, and since Yokia doesn't have enough to win, Akiyama will do everything he can to drown him in debt. The con man returns to his team and gives back their bank cards, and 
insisting they drop out once the game is over, but he's got no idea that this girl will destroy his plans. By the 24th round, their team only needs to smuggle the rest of Now's money to win, and the con man offers to help, but she insists on finishing the job herself. In the customs room, the girl faces off against Yokia, and with only five rounds remaining, Now begs him to end this in a draw, insisting they don't have to betray each other. Akiyama is shocked, but can only watch as the girl ignores his strategy. Yokia is touched by her honesty and agrees to give her his card, but asks for her card in return as a sign of trust. Even though it's suspicious, the girl hands it over to him, but suddenly the man reveals she just fell for his trap. He explains he convinced another teammate to give him his card and ask the agents to transfer all his own money to it just before walking into this room. That means the card she's holding is worthless, and now he has what he needs to beat them, but offers Akiyama a choice. If he gives him the three cards that were taken from his teammates, then Yokia will return the girl's card, but there's one catch. The three players will end up in debt as a result, and the con man is guaranteed to lose. Okay, now mess this up big time. Akiyama's strategy was already working, but the girl insisted on doing things her way, and now everyone on her team is about to lose 500 million yen. Honesty is definitely a good thing, but I would tell as many lies as necessary if it saved my team from a lifetime of crushing debt. This guy should have known better than to let the girl into the room when the stakes were this high, and if it were me, I would make sure to keep Nao and Fukunaga as far away from the cash or the customs room as humanly possible. Akiyama definitely could have won with his strategy, because he managed to strike a secret contract with three players from the other team, telling them that he can guarantee they won't go into debt even if they lose. All they have to do is give him their ATM cards so they can't withdraw their earnings until the plan is finished. Then, when it's their turn to smuggle money, Akiyama gives them his team's cards so that this time, they can take out Water Country's money from the bank instead. That way, when they bring it into the customs room, he can let them pass, making it look like they're winning, but the money is just recycled back into the same account. The second part of his plan has to do with him operating as a smuggler. He refused to leave his room, insisting that he play the rest of the game on his own, but it was only so he could follow through on his secret plan. After the players of the other team finished their turn, they gave back the ATM cards to Akiyama so that he could withdraw more money from it. The only difference is that this time, he would intentionally lose, letting the other players guess the correct amount and have it confiscated. According to the rules, if the inspector successfully confiscates money, then those funds go directly to the player, not to the team. With both of these strategies working together, he found the perfect way to drain as much money from the other team's bank account as possible without anyone noticing until it was too late. It might sound like they're betting the rules, but as they figured out in the previous games, lies and secret deals are pretty much encouraged by the agency and they'll let you do almost anything to get ahead. This is exactly why if I were these other players here, I would accept the man's deal without blinking because Akiyama and Fukunaga are the smartest players in the game and I would want to have an insurance policy before we lose. Making his decision, the con man heads for the customs room and sits down before laying the three cards on the table. Yoki accepts the exchange, confident that he's just won the game. But that's when he realizes Akiyama is laughing. The con man tells him that he's fallen for his trap and reveals a duplicate set of cards in his hands. He explains that before entering the customs room, he damaged the original three cards and asked the agency to replace them, but kept both copies. That's when the dealer announces that the old man has returned to the game, and as a result, all the money Yokia had collected has just been transferred back to his original card. Akiyama leaves the room and tells Now to never sabotage them again, but as he's walking away, he sees the members of the other team on the balcony. After hearing the girl's suggestion, they refuse to play by his rules and all agree to make it a draw. Nobody wants to end up in debt and even the girl's teammates like the idea, but Fukunaga here is about to ruin everything. The two teams work together to make sure this game will end in a draw, but that's when the thief approaches now. Curious, he asks the girl to check if the card has been damaged, but she doesn't realize this is a trick. Suddenly, he grabs it out of her hands and runs straight through the door leading to the customs room. Fukunaga is going to betray them just like he did in the other games and there's nothing they can do to stop him. Stepping into the room, Yokia reveals that he's been secretly working with the thief, and now that the score is tied, he has a chance to win the game. He leaves to withdraw money and comes back inside with 100 million yen, taunting the girl for thinking she could trust the thief, but he's going to instantly regret it. Hearing this, Fukunaga remembers that now saved him in the last game and has a sudden change of heart. Pushing the doubt button, he decides to betray the man by declaring exactly how much is inside the suitcase, and in one move, he's given them the opportunity to win back the game. Akiyama takes the last turn and walks inside the customs room to meet his enemy, telling him there's a hundred million yen in the case, but it's his choice to believe him. Nervous, Yokia takes a 
risk, declaring that there's money inside, and as soon as he opens the lid, he's shocked to discover that Akiyama was telling the truth. The man now has exactly enough money to pay off his debt, and the game ends in a draw. Against all odds, Nao's plan is a success, and they can all move on to the fourth round. But as terrifying as it was to play, the girl learned a valuable lesson. Trusting others is always worth the risk when your boyfriend is a genius. But what do you think? How would you be Liar Game Part 2? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.